Welcome to our lecture online and now let's talk about the Laplacian. It's again one of those concepts that is very difficult to understand so if we get a good example of it we'll do a lot better here. Mathematically the Laplacian of a scalar field, it could be either of a scalar or a scalar field, typically it'll be of a scalar field, it is equal to the divergence of the gradient of that scalar field. Hmm, the divergence of that gradient. Mathematically it is the del operator squared times the scalar field, which is equal to the del operator multiplied via dot product with the gradient of the scalar field. Now when we expand that, this is the del operator, it's a vector quantity, and we're going to multiply it via the dot product with the gradient of the scalar field, which is also a vector quantity. When you dot two vectors, of course, you get a scalar, so the result of that is a number, a scalar number, which can either be positive or negative. In a shorter way of writing it, this can also be written like this. When you look at this, this is simply the second derivative with respect to x, y, and z of the scalar field. And if we use the same examples we used before, here's our scale, scalar field, which is u, y squared minus x, kind of represented by these curves here. And notice that here these lines represent the regions in space, or in this case in the two-dimensional region, where the value of the scalar field is constant. So u equals 2 along this line, u equals 4, u equals 6, and now remember that the gradient of that scalar field, represented by this arrow here, is simply the, the direction and the magnitude of the largest change in the field. And that, of course, you can always see that's always perpendicular to a line that represents a constant uh, value. Now, if we take that gradient and we take the divergence of that gradient, what are we looking for? Well, in essence, it's analogous to taking the second derivative. And what does the second derivative tell us? It tells us the concavity of that scalar field in three dimensions. Hmm, the concavity. That means it tells us how the change is changing. In other words, if I move to a different location, how much is my gradient changing when I move from one point to another point in my, in my scalar field? And that's what we mean by the Laplacian. So a nice example is this. Let's say we have a room, three dimensions, and we move from one location in the room to another location in the room, and this line here represents the temperature change as I go from one location to the other. Notice that here the temperature is increasing, it reaches a maximum value, then it begins to decrease, it reaches a minimum value, and then begins to increase again. If we take the second derivative of that, in other words, the function of the temperature, that's saying I'm taking the Laplacian of that temperature, and you can see that here the Laplacian would be negative because it's concave down, and here the Laplacian would be positive because it's concave up. So the Laplacian tells us how the change is changing. Even though the temperature may be increasing, the increase gets to be smaller, 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 so the change of the change means it's negative, that even though it's increasing, the increase is getting smaller, eventually it will top out and then begin to decrease. That's what the Laplacian can tell us. And here we can see that even though the temperature is decreasing, if the Laplacian is positive, the decrease is becoming smaller, 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 eventually it will bottom out and then the temperature will begin to increase. So again, the Laplacian, the best way to think about it is that it's simply the second derivative of the scalar function. A slightly different example here, let's say this is a topographical map. Notice that here you're reaching a valley and then you go back up and then you get to a, the high point of that outcropping and then you go back down. So this line here represents the elevation as you travel along this dashed line here. So again, that would be a scalar field in two dimensions, and if we go travel along the line, notice that we go from a higher point to a lower point, back to a higher point, back to a lower point. These dots here are what we call the inflection points, and the inflection points indicate the changeover from the second derivative going from a positive to negative value. Here you can see that it's concave down, therefore we have a negative Laplacian value. There the Laplacian would be zero, now we have a concave up, so now we have a positive Laplacian. Here the Laplacian would be zero. Now we have a negative Laplacian, and there Laplacian would be zero again, and then we have a positive Laplacian. So the Laplacian tells you how the change is changing. If it's positive, that means 
that eventually the decrease will diminish and the increase will start. If it's negative, that means the increase will diminish and the decrease will start. That's the best way to think about the Laplacian and it's actually fairly easy to calculate the Laplacian because it's simply the partial derivative of a scalar function. If we take the scalar function, let's figure out what the Laplacian would be for that particular function there. The partial derivative of u respect to x, well, it's the partial second derivative. The first derivative, well, this will go to 0, this will give us a negative 1. The second derivative, negative 1, is 0, so the first term becomes 0. Plus, the second term is the partial of the, of the scalar field with respect to y. It's the second derivative. Well, the first derivative gives you 2y, and then the second derivative, the derivative of 2y is 2. That gives us the value 2. Plus, and then the third one, since there's no z variables in there, that will also be 0, which means in this case the Laplacian is 2, it's a positive value. What does that mean? What does it mean when the Laplacian of this scalar function is equal to 2? Well, let's take a look at each of the three variables separately. First of all, the variable z. If we change the value for z, it has no effect on u, so therefore it cannot be contributed to the Laplacian. Now let's take a look at the variable x. Notice that u depends linearly on x, which means that if we compare the value between u and x, if we draw a graph between u and x, notice that as x gets bigger, u gets smaller, and as x gets smaller, u gets bigger. So it's an inverse relationship, which means that the function is a linear function like this. And you can see that there's no change in the slope, if we take the first derivative, we get a constant, and then if we take the second derivative, we get zero, which means there is no change, therefore there is no concavity related to that in the second derivative. And finally, we're going to compare the variable y to u. Notice that u depends on y squared. There's a second degree there. If we graph that function, here's u, here's y, as y gets big, u gets big, and as y gets very small, u gets big as well, because it's y squared. Notice that the concavities function is always going to be positive, and it looks like the concavities function is always equal to 2. And that's the physical meaning of the Laplacian of this particular scalar function, or scalar field. And now we can see that the Laplacian of that particular scalar field must indeed be 2 and must indeed always be positive, which means that if we're going to change our position in the y direction, so if this is the x direction, this is the y direction, if we change the position in the y direction, the concavity of, meaning the second derivative of the gradient, or I should say, I shouldn't say the second derivative of the gradient, the second derivative of the scalar function will always be positive, and that's what we mean with the Laplacian.